Greetings, citizens, and welcome to another edition of Reverse the Verse Live, the only show on the internet that features Kung Fu Grip. Yes, our TV has hands that grip, fingers that hold open and uh, you let close, hands that hold on with a Kung Fu Grip. The grip you help, that helps RTV use in self-defense. It's possible I was watching vintage commercials this morning. Apologies. On the show this week, we've got Vehicle Pipeline Director John Crew to talk about all the ships of Alpha 3.2. Now that means we'll be here to answer your questions about the, uh, the Hurricane, the Eclipse, the Vandal Blade, the Avenger rework, and the Origin 600. And later on the show, uh, we have a special treat, uh, a, a once in a lifetime segment about the RSI roadmap, so stay tuned for that. But up first, let's go ahead and do the week in review. Now last week we had lead systems designer Kirk Tomei and lead gameplay engineer Mark Abent here. On the, they're on the show to discuss all the new scanning mechanics that were coming online with Alpha 3.2 and beyond. Now I'm going to say it's impossible to oversell how integral scanning will be to the overall Star Citizen experience. And if you missed that show, it's like all shows, available now up on YouTube. Now Monday brought with it another all new episode of Calling All Devs, which featured uh, developers addressing your backer submitted questions about uh, how to identify characters uh, if the over the head name tags don't return to the persistent universe, uh, life support's role in the ship component system, and a couple questions about the freelancer in the constellation Phoenix. And before we continue, I do want to add that after 21 episodes of Calling All Devs, we finally got one wrong. The Phoenix will have both manned turrets, same as the Andromeda, and unlike the version that's available now in your hangar. I blame Chris dancing behind Hosmer for distracting us both. You can see it happen. Uh, Tuesday is Lore Day in the Star Citizen universe, and uh, for this week's post, you'll have to go to robertspaceindustries.com to find out what it was, because I forgot to check before the show. MLG Pro host here. We also announced the winners of both the Hercules Starlifter and Tutorial Contests. You can find out if you won up on Spectrum, and then Thursday brought with it another all-new episode of Around the Verse, affectionately referred to as Up Your Arsenal. For once, I didn't name the episode, but I wish I did. Uh, it's, a short week, uh, it's a short week in review this week because we want to get right to the spaceships, so sit tight, and when we return, John Crew and uh, the roadmap update at the end of the show. Stay tuned. I don't know what that was. Uh, so, joining us on RTV this week, Vehicle Pipeline Director John Crew. John, how are you doing, man? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for thank you for staying late on a Friday to be here on the show with us this week. That's fine. Don't, don't say that's fine. I'll I'll, I'll use it. Make, make it seem hard. like it's a big out of your way thing, so I don't do it all all the time. Going straight to the pub after this. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, uh, you are the Vehicle Pipeline Director, so it means uh, you, uh, you, your work... Ten well, why, why don't you tell people what a Vehicle Pipeline Director does? Right, so my role is sort of ensuring that all the ships globally coming out of all the studios are done to the same standard, done to... Uh, they're all working together and they're not sort of, this studio does it set up in this way, this one does it in another way. We're all doing it the same. Uh, they're all being looked after from concept to post-release by one person that isn't Chris because he just doesn't have the time to, to do all those roles. So I'm there looking after everything throughout the entire pipeline, hence the pipeline in the title, uh, and making sure it's all sort of that one unified direction. And of course, getting asked by me at least three times a month for a variety of things like this. I wish it was only three times a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Well, ships, man, they're important to Star Citizen. All right, There's so a lot of them. Yes. Uh, so on this week's show, uh, we're doing a special Ships of Alpha 3.2 show. Uh, you, you, we're opening the floor to questions about any ship that's coming out in Alpha 3.2. Uh, like we said before the break, uh, that's the Avenger variants, that's the Hurricane, that's the Eclipse, 
that's the Vandal Blade and the 600i. Um, you can submit your questions in one of two places. You can either submit your question live in Twitch chat, where you, uh, we ask that you please preface your question with the word question in capital letters surrounded by brackets. That's going to help Tyler Wicken uh, pull them out from the chat. You can also submit your questions in Spectrum, which is our own communication platform up on robertspaceindustries.com. Same rules. You go to general chat, Post your question there, question in capital letters surrounded by brackets. Uh, additionally, as we are wont to do, uh, we put up a thread up in Spectrum uh, about 24 hours ago collecting questions ahead of time for people that can't make it to the show this week. So we are going to get right into it because normally we do one of these things about one ship and we've got a number of ships to, to discuss. So we're just, we're, we're jumping right into it. Right now, right off the bat, I got a question for you about the Origin 600i, John. It says, why does the 600i have mostly size M components, the same size of the Freelancer Constellation, but have the ship size like a Starfarer or Caterpillar with large components? Will the 600i be a weak ship? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's, it's got them because it doesn't need to have the components of the larger ships, which have got extra roles and functionality that require those things. It's got a large power plant because it's got a lot of things to do, but the rest of the components that are medium are sort of it's sort of capable for what what its intended role is. It's not uh, it's not out there refining fuel like the Starfarer. Uh, it's not a, a supremely large target that needs to have all its power putting into shields. Uh, it's, it sort of fits in with those other medium-sized ships. Yeah, it's one of the hard. It's one of those hard things that that to, to really wrap your brain around from from a uh, from an outside design perspective until the full item system 2.0 and component system you know fully come online and, and, and until until players are are able to actually you know pull components out and swap them you know increase the grade, uh, in, 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 uh, ch change the, the the class whether it's you know civilian or military or industrial and whatnot until we actually start to get our hands on these components and, and start swapping out and note and seeing the effect of each one on ships uh, it, 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 it's, it's going to be it's good this is a question that comes up quite a lot is what I'm saying it's, it's going to be a hard thing for, 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 for folks like me outside of design to really wrap our heads around until that day comes it's but, very hard to just see it from those stats and get sort of how it all works together you just see the numbers and the quantities and you you have to put it together in your mind as to how it works but there's a lot more that goes on in the middle mm -hmm. uh, the the exact same configuration in two ships yeah. could completely be different gameplay wise and the easy thing to forget is also it's not just like just using the power plant for instance it's not just the size of the power plant but it is the consumption of the ship how the ship yeah. itself is designed to consume power so if the ship is is a, a, a more efficient design for instance you know where it uses primarily uh you know, ballistics instead of energy weapons when it's not going to need that that big a drain on the power on the power plant like a like a like another ship might so, yeah, and there's, there's, there's other components in ships that aren't on the website and they aren't swappable, so you don't see sort of any interaction with them. And they also, like heat sinks on ships, uh, you can't swap them out, they're just part of the ship. Yeah. So you could put a million coolers on a ship, but if that heat sink is quite tiny, it's, it's not going to do a, a great deal. Yep. All right, questions have started coming in from the live chat. Um, are we still only getting the 600i Explorer variant in 3.2? Yes. Yes. Uh, is there... the, the, the touring one is in production, uh, but it's not going to be in 3.2. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was my next point. Well, we don't actually have the Turing module on a schedule yet. So uh, it's, it's a good time to invite people to check out the RSI roadmap available at robertspaceindustries.com slash roadmap. Uh, when we have a better idea when the Turing module will be ready, uh, you'll see that appear on the roadmap. Uh, in some of the six, we're flooded with 600i uh, questions. In some of the 600i concept art, we saw a giant 3D map inside. Is that still there? And if so, will it be functional? Uh, it's still there, but it won't be functional in the initial release. Uh, it's going to function the same as the big capital ship uh, war globe holosphere things. So they are, in essence, a 3D radar that you have in your cockpit scaled up. Um, and rather than being little dots, uh, they are the little mini ship models. So it is going to behave like that, but it's, we're just not enabling that at the moment. 
Yeah, one, one, of the, one, of the earliest, uh, uh, one of the earliest goals I set for myself in Star Citizen as a project was, was standing with somebody around one of those 3D globes as, the, as the, our ship is being destroyed and, and just and be like, what do we do now? And me having a little eye visor that just flips closed. We die. Which, which is a really probably obscure reference. Maybe not for this crowd, but... Oh, well, well, somehow I'll just say, there's, there's two things that are sort of stopping us making it happen at the moment just so it's not a, oh we're just not doing it at the moment uh first thing is we don't have the the ability to change those um little icons into mini 3d ships at the moment um so you just have the little small icons blown up really big which mm -hmm. looks terrible mm -hmm. and we don't have the ability to click on them to do targeting and selecting them uh which is something chris is really keen on having in all the ships and in fact even on the small 3d radars in ships when you can zoom really far in, they will change into those 3D models and then you can select on them if you want. And it's the same as looking in that direction and targeting it. So nice. when we have those, then the big ships which have those big holospheres, we'll, we'll get all that essentially for free. Nice, I didn't know that. That's, that's good. It's not often I learn something on these shows. That's good to know. All right, Avenger question from the live chat. Is the Avenger ramp the same-ish width as the old one, just without the hydraulics? Uh, it's a little wider. I'm not sure exactly how much, but it's sort of. It's. I know this. This is leading up to a will something fit question. <laughs> um, it's slightly wider, and the angle is slightly shallower, and the headspace is slightly larger. Gotcha. All right. So whatever you were trying to ram in there, before, might just fit now. Title of my autobiography. Not a cyclone. <laughs> uh, it's been one of those mornings. Okay. Does, why does the Hurricane, according to ATV, now have a laser-based loadout, even though the original concept was stated to rely on ballistics due to a comparatively weak power plant? So it still has a comparatively weak power plant. Uh, I was talking with the guys who were on the ATV earlier today, because uh, I saw this question in the thread and didn't want to cross wires. Uh, that was just something that they were playing around with in that ATV. Uh, the stock loadout that will come with 3.2 is all ballistics. Um, you can swap them out for lasers if you want. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. If you run all lasers on everything, it's going to suffer. You can probably just get away with uh, having all lasers on the turret and ballistics on the ship itself. Um, but ballistics is what it's designed for. Gotcha. All right, uh, kind of a broad question, but one that comes up often, maybe you're the person to answer it. From the live chat, why do some ships with beds not come with toilets and showers? Uh, that's more of a, a thing that was... <laughs> ships, ships that were built a long time ago don't have the same considerations put into them as ships built today. Um, some of them are intentional. Like if, it's, uh, if it's a bed, then we're... Without an example, it's hard to, to tell you why or mm -hmm. why not. It doesn't have it. But for recent ships, if it's just got a bed, then it's something we're not wanting you to spend a long time, a long, long time away from base in because you, you're not going to have the, the food and hygiene facilities. It's the bed's there for essentially the log-in, log-out uh, gameplay. Um, ones that do have the beds and toilets and showers and the toilet shower combo that everyone loves. Yeah. Uh, are there for the extended duration stuff, so where you can go out, land on the planet, yeah. have it as a little mini base for a while. Yeah, it, 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 it's hard to talk about it in general because, it, like I said, without specific uh, examples to speak to, um, like most things in life, things happen for a variety of reasons. You know, uh, it, this was this way because of these three factors that existed at that time. This happened this way because of those two factors that existed two years later when, when those developers were on it. So it's hard to give kind of a blanket answer why that is. But uh, it's part of my role as well now is to sort of make sure everything has everything it should do. Um, that's right. There's, there's always the human error. That's a good point. You, you, actually, uh, you actually were just promoted into this role a couple months ago, right? Yeah, about a month ago. A month ago, yeah. And this role didn't exist. So this was, this was a new role that we have identified throughout development as, ne as necessary to uh, help address things like that. Yeah, because uh, the ship pipeline is relentless. Um, and it's always going 24-7. So 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I had an inkling of that before I, uh, I pitched Ship Shape, and, and now I, uh, I definitely am aware of that after uh, several, uh, eight months into it now. Uh, let's see, what else? Will the Avenger variants uh, be getting any component size or grade upgrades to account for its larger size? The only thing that's changed on it component-wise uh, are the weapon hardpoints on the wings have gone up by one size. Uh, it still comes gimbaled by default, um, mm -hmm. but they're now gimbaled size twos, I think. Nice. So, so it, 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 got a, it got a weapon size upgrade, but as yes. far as the so, internal so. components, there was nothing that required the internal components to nothing, change. Nothing internal was changed component-wise. The, the main reason for doing that rework was simply that re really cramped uh, interior space, so making that a, a more pleasant traversal experience. Um, and once we did that, sort of the rest of it had to change because it looked ridiculous with just this <laughs> ex extended and stretched middle section. <laughs> You've got a mental image of the old Avenger with just uh, the middle bit is yeah. a third larger. It looked silly. So, yeah. uh, and then when we did that, the the guns on the wings looked tiny. Um, yeah, if I'm allowed to have a have, have a, a dispassionate opinion away from being a developer, I love the look of the Avenger. It's it it is a ship that's grown on me, much like the Terrapin. Like I didn't like it when I, when I first saw it, and then just over the years, just seeing it motion, seeing it, seeing it used, I'm just like that is a really uh, slick looking ship. Oh, the the other thing that changed is the nose mount is no longer bespoke and locked. Uh, so the the Tiger Strike is gone for now. Mm -hmm. uh, in its place is a size four mount with a, the size three Mantis, the new Mantis uh, on there by default. The Tiger Strike will come back in the future. It's just uh, we didn't have time to make another size three Gatling yeah. just for that run. So yeah. Now, now when you say the Tiger Strike will be back in the future, you mean just in general, or it will be back as part of the Avenger default it'll, line? It'll be back as a general size three ballistic Gatling that can go on any ship. Gotcha. All right. Uh, uh, you actually already answered the next question ahead of that, so good job. Uh, when we talk about ships that can fit in the back of the Avenger, uh, has anybody tried to fit a Dragonfly in there that you're aware of? Uh, not that I've seen, but I'm sure someone has done. It yeah. almost certainly isn't going to end well. Yeah, this is, this is one of those times where, be, be, because the will this fit in this is so, uh, is such a crucial part of the community testing, we often don't even Try going. I'm sure somebody in QA does and whatnot, but honestly, it's it's you guys are going to do that part for us, and you guys will it's you guys will do it far more extensively than we ever will. So you'll let us know. Let's see what else do we got. Uh, why does the freelancer have no interior component access points? Uh, because we haven't modeled them yet. Uh, we know where they're all going. Uh, there is actually a local version of it with. Uh, it's essentially brought the back face of the walls slightly closer to the exterior and the interior face of the walls slightly in uh, to create the cavity to put them all in. Um, you can sort of see it uh, where they're going to be on the interior. If you're in the cargo bay looking forwards, uh, you've got the door into the middle mm -hmm. room section. There's these two recessed panels up there. That's where the computers will go and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh we're talking about ships coming for Alpha 3.2. Now, obviously, we've, we've got a couple new ships, but has anything been done to alter existing ships uh, that it, for 3.2, like bug fixes or minor changes, item port additions? Uh, nothing, nothing massive I can think of off the top of my head. There's, there's always bug fixes going into the ship, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if every ship has had a, a few bugs fixed on it. One of the big things that has changed is the glass shader has been completely o overhauled by the graphics team. Um, so it's, it's a lot more realistic now. Um, and after in the process of putting it in all the ship canopies and tweaking it. So uh, if people are playing the Avocati build, there might be the odd ship out there that is slightly too polished glass. Um, yeah. So let us know and we'll get to it. But a lot of them. A lot of them just been converted and haven't had the the polish put on them yet. Yeah, that, that's one of the that, that that hints towards one of the greatest advantages of running a live environment in the middle of our game development is that we can throw something out there and then you guys can tell us you know it, you know this is too blind I can't see through this and stuff like that so we can adjust. Um, will the Eclipse's torpedo bay be modular? 
Now, they're asking about the player-facing modularity, not our own internal development modularity. You know, they're asking, will they be able to swap the torpedo, the Eclipse's torpedo bay out and put, I don't know, a living room in I don't, they don't. They don't suggest what it would be modular with, but... Uh, there's no plans to do that at the moment. Uh, it's not something we've considered. I'm not going to say never say never, but mm -hmm. it's nothing nothing we're planning on doing. Um, the interior of the Bombay is modeled to accommodate the torpedo launcher that's in there. So it's it would be more work than just simply taking out the missile racks or torpedo racks and putting something else in. Gotcha. All right, uh, question in both chats, the, the special thread and the live chat here. Uh, with the Avengers size increase, has there been any change to its cargo capacity? Nope, still the same as it was before. Um, the back section of it didn't really uh, change that much. Um, it got slightly longer, but that just meant more space to actually walk around. The actual cargo grid stayed the same. Gotcha. Uh, back to another question about the 600i. Since the announced size increase of the 600i, we did the ATV ship shape segment where they talked about, you know, the UK tends to, you know, these ships tend to expand beyond their concept models. Uh, there have been no updates to its stats on the website. Are the currently displayed stats still correct? And if not, when will they be updated? Now I can tell you right now, let me just let me answer the last part and you can answer the first. Uh, as far as when we update the stats, there's usually just the concept stats and then there's the when it's built and implemented stats. Uh, we, we tried once a while back to do these incremental stat increases, but honestly, it's just a lot of busy work. It's, it's having to sense, oh, this changed, and then you make the change and then a day later, nope, we thought that was going to change, it's not going to change. And instead of just playing with everybody's emotions and updating them as they go up and down throughout development, we just figured let's do it at two milestones at the concept phase and when it's when it's uh, implemented in game and then after that you know should there be any changes of course you know when they happen now those are the times that you can expect updates on ship stats so if you're when you're asking about when will they be updated the next time that they could conceivably be updated is when it goes live back to the other thing are the stats correct uh, so they definitely weren't correct when the the concept was and we did a quick uh, fix on the uh, I was going to say holoview, but it's not the holoview, it's the, the ship stats page. To my knowledge at the moment, what's on there is what uh, it will be at launch, but as you said, if it's not, uh, then it will be changed then. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that likely is going to change is the, the, the size is going to not be a rounded number, um, but... <laughs> right, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, if an artist has gone and put a fin on the width of it somewhere that we haven't noticed before, and it's made it a meter wider, that's that's really the only level of changes to expect. The components are the same. Gotcha. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, in the long run, can we expect to see any additional modules for the 600i other than the Explorer or Luxury? Uh, we're not looking at doing any more, um, but unlike the Eclipse, it is built to be able to do them relatively easy. The, uh, the entry points into that modular section are all defined. It's just whether we identify a need to do one. Uh, with Alpha 3.2, uh, we, we're introducing the Eclipse, which is ostensibly a stealth ship. We've already got ships like the, the Sabre. Uh, is the stealth mechanic going to be in full swing in 3.2 when the Eclipse arrives? Or will it just kind of function similar to how the Sabre does as far as EM readings and stuff like that? I wouldn't say it's, it'll be in full swing, but it's going to be more improved than 3.1.4 is for the Sabre. So uh, with 3.2, we've got some big changes to item 2.0. So the the components in the ships are now consuming uh, power, and that power use changes depending on what you're doing rather than just being a, a flat amount. Uh, we've done a complete uh, overhaul of the numbers for power and heat across multiple items. Um, and then scanning is sort of the, the very first version of it is coming with mining. Um, the, the scanning ability is, is really, the, the majority of it's for mining there at the moment, but it is going to be on all the ships. Uh, so you will be able to use it for scanning. Um, and because we've done all the tweaking on the, the number sides, the, the Eclipse especially has very low uh, signatures. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the, I was playing with it earlier today. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but the Eclipse was up 
about half a third of what the Sabres emissions were, um, which itself was about half a, a Hornet or a Gladius. Gotcha. I do want to add on there, uh, when, he, when he says the scanning is primarily with mining and that the scanning will be on all ships, that is not the same as saying all ships will be able to mine. I just don't want people to do whatever my, my gymnastic my math they need to, to, to extract that. All ships will not be able to mine in 3.2. We'll actually talk about which ships uh, can mine in 3.2 towards the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see, what else do we got from the, from the chat here? Um, will there be a flight ready sale uh, or promotion to accompany to accompany these new ships uh yes as as there normally is uh, every time we, we 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 add new we add ships to the game uh we do uh, fire up the promotional machine and make and make uh, some selection of these ships available to backers everywhere so you can expect that uh as far as dates and which ships and how much i don't have that information anymore but you can expect there to be a promotion yes let's see hurricane question how did the maneuverability end up? Is it pretty nimble? Uh, I will give the honest answer in that I haven't played it in its latest version because we did a complete retune of it about half an hour ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's what so, Hasbro's in there doing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, how it was before, it was it was fairly nimble. Um, but there, there were some issues that needed to be fixed with the setup and they needed to retune after. So it was fairly nimble the last time I played it, but that is not what is going into the builds at the moment. Okay. Uh, any plans to make the Avenger Stalker cells be removable for cargo runs? This, is, this goes back to the whole modules variance thing mm -hmm. we discussed on one of these a, a while ago. It's, we're still not sure which way we want to go with those Avengers. Um, there was a lot of promises for, for both sides, so yes. we're, we're going to have to decide one way or the other. And when we do, we'll communicate that. It's sort of, it, it will either be their fixed variants, you can't take them out. Um, and if you've got one of them, that's the one you've got, you would need to get a, a different ship essentially to get the other ones. Or we go down the fully modular one, the modular route where you have an Avenger everyone that got all the four individual or three individual ones um now you all just have the one ship with the modular pieces um at the moment it's going to stay as a variant and you can't remove them uh that's not the final answer yeah. nope that you, you you hit you hit all the points uh, uh if, if, if if you want the, if you want the short nickel version of the history for those of you who weren't around real quick uh there was the avenger when we introduced the 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 EMP the, the EMP uh, module, uh, we originally intended to present them as modules, uh, but the modular the player facing modular system wasn't online then. It's not online now. We wanted to get EMP gameplay into the game so we could start testing. So we implemented the Avenger as variants as opposed to their original intention uh, as modules. Uh, they've been variants for a number of years, uh, and everybody's sort of used to them as variants right now. Uh, so until such time as the player facing modular system is ready to go and, and those decisions have to be made uh we will continue to weigh our options we will continue to read your feedback and uh we'll let you know when we have that decision so okay what else do we got how how can the eclipse land if its wings are broken uh ungracefully uh it's, it's the same as some of the other well if you take both wings off a of gladius how how can it land no yeah. um, it's so sort of... Uh, there's a lot of ships that if you suffer damage in the wrong places, they they have severe consequences. Yeah. But, but that, that's in line with some of the great, you know, like World War II era stories, you know, the, the, the planes that have to come in for a landing on the, on the aircraft carrier and they don't have their landing gear and, you know, and you, you, have, you, have to, you have to compensate for, for, for that sort of, you know, landing and stuff. That's, a, that, that's, that's an experience, that, uh, it's an experience that, that I think will make Star Citizen, uh, will be one of the things that makes Star Citizen great. I, I don't think you want every ship to have a contingency for every scenario. You, you'll definitely be able to land. It's the type of landing it might not be the one you want. Yeah. Uh, this one, uh, sorry for going off topic. You're, uh, does the work on the, three, on the 600 per, help prepare you for the 300 series rework? Uh, yes, and the same for the 890. Um, the, the reason we did the 600 was 
it sort of is that middle ground between the two styles of it. So we did the, the 600, so we got the big motor cruise side of it ready for the 890. Uh, we did the 100 concept, which helps figure out some of the smaller details. Um, and now we've got those two there, we can do the two there. Mm -hmm. And if you're curious about the order of operations on that, which ship is coming after the 600 iron step, I invite you to check out Ship Shape, where we uh, delineated the plan for the, for the teams working on the 600 i now and where they're going to go afterwards. Uh, the Avenger rework, uh, since it's getting bigger, does that mean it's less agile in a dogfight? Uh, fractionally less agile. It's still pretty, pretty good. I mean, it was in law at the old uh, UE Interceptor, so... It's still got that characteristic. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, why was the event? Why was the Mustang Alpha and its variants chosen to be pushed into three three instead of, say, the Aegis Avenger and its variants? Uh, the essentially the the Mustangs weren't ready enough for it. They needed a bit extra time. And as soon as you miss that, we we have a feature lock date that is. Uh, six seven weeks before the release date uh, mm -hmm. if stuff is not ready by that date um then it moves to the next one yeah. and it uh, just wasn't ready in time for that date so we moved it yes some some features have have a lock date six to seven weeks some features uh have a lock date uh sooner we're going to talk about that later in the show we're talking about like you know it's like the ship team that they have their feature lock date earlier and stuff like that uh other teams you know they, they will they will push things right to the uh, level and We'll, we'll talk about why and all that stuff in the, in the, later on in the show. Um, let's see, but yeah, the Avenger Rework. Plus, the Avenger, the Avenger Rework had the benefit of being a, a utilized in Squadron 42, so it got kind of a head start. It was originally started by the Squadron 42 ship team, wasn't it? Yes, uh, and it started a lot sooner than the yeah. Mustangs. I think the Mustangs, I don't know when they officially started, so I'm not going to speculate, but I know the Avenger was done, was started uh, last year for the live stream. Mm -hmm. Um, during the design of the 600i, were there any considerations to make the ship, quote unquote, homely, like a flying house you can live comfortably in? Uh, if you like the decor that's in there at the moment, then that's probably a, a comfy home for you. It's sort of the origin 600 and 890, uh, they, they veer towards that sort of ostentatious yeah. super yacht styling that uh, a certain crowd love um sort of in your face starting um yeah i think I, 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 homely wasn't the word I, homely was not the word that i would ever apply to the to the 600i uh, no i i wouldn't want it as my home uh, but there's there's many people that do oh i'd want it as my home i just don't think it, it, it's when i think of homely i think of uh <laughs> actually what i think of is the the girl from she's all that before she has a makeover and i, I don't know why that's where my brain went but that's all right uh, let's see. Got got deep real soon. <laughs> That's a deep cut. A deep. She's a Freddie Prince Jr. cut there. Um, uh, the blade. Do you walk into the blade or kind of crawl into it? Oh, blade question. I was wondering when someone's. Yeah, no, ask I'm surprised there hasn't been more. Um, it's it uses the same entry method as the scythe and the glaive. The the copy interior essentially is the same template. Um, so you, you get on what we affectionately call the massage bed uh, and it erases you up into it. And you're in a prone lying down position. Yep. Um, here's an interesting question uh, we can talk about for a second. Uh, this person is it's less than a, it's less a information question, more a plea. Uh, can we move away from ships like the Eclipse and the Razor that are focused on one single task and return to player side modularity? Uh, I wouldn't say we've intentionally moved away from it. Um, there's to to create the whole breadth of ships that we need for the universe. There there has to be some that have a sole focus. Um, we did a, a huge push on modular ships early on, and it's sort of they come in waves. We we'll do a load of sort of specific career focused ones, specific role focused ones. Then we'll do a couple of modular ones. So mm -hmm. um, I, it's not been a general order to move away from those things it's just we we needed those specific ones yep and and, and of course uh, let, let's uh, from from my side of things from the side of things here in the in the in the marketing the promotion and stuff like that um 
we, 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 the player facing modular system isn't in game and whatnot, and you always want to be careful how many things uh, you, you promise. You, you promise as far as you know, new, new features and stuff like that. You don't, you, you, uh, we, we've committed to a number of things using the player modular system. The Endeavor, for instance, the, uh, lives and breathes by it. Uh, the Retaliator uh, use, utilizes it. Uh, you know, the 600i utilizes the player. Will you utilize, utilize the? I realize that, although it's actually the 600i is secondly a variant. Uh, what's the other? What's the other player-facing modularity system? It's the Endeavor and the Retaliator. Oh, the Vanguards essentially use yep. the player modularity system. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's just it's prudent on our end when we ask for things uh, to let that player-facing modularity system develop a bit more before we start, you know, making you know the request from our end. Hey, can we do this? Can we do that? Kind of stuff like that. It's just they just think it's the responsible thing to do on our end. So there, there are also things that can do lots of things are they're, they're desirable for a small set of people that really love the, the ability to do everything but uh, as a as a wider concept they the, they lack a, a focus naturally because they're, they're multi-role so it's very hard to get excited about something that can do lots of things mediocrely and uh, yeah. rather than one thing that can do it really well. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, the, 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 the worst uh, marketing tagline in the world would be jack of all trades and master of none. It's like, well, why, why no, no, nobody, nobody wants to be told their ship isn't, very, isn't really good at anything. So because we, because we made it too broad. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, where exactly are the three forward facing fixed guns on the 600i? Uh, one on each wing shoulder bit, and there's one on top. Okay. Uh, any plans for the return of the two-seat Avenger? Uh, no plans for that. Okay. Um, can the, uh, will the prospector be able to drop its saddlebags in 3-2? Not in 3-2. Uh, let's see. Does the hurricane handle better? Oh, we are actually we, we talked about the hurricane handling, and we already talked about so. It's a, so he hasn't seen the hurricane yet since its update earlier this morning. Oh, go back to the prospector one. You can't drop the saddlebags, but the capacity we've given you for the saddlebags is though you have the ability to drop them and have them all. So it's not sort of we've not crippled you to only having two tiny little things. You've got your maximum capacity, which you can then go back and sell until we do that feature. Okay. Um, uh, has there been any consideration to a future option that would allow people to improve the ship's hull armor strength beyond the factory default? We're talking about yes. all these components. Yep, so armor is going to be a swappable item on the ships in the future. Uh, it, it's sort of there as something that functions on the Hornet series. Uh, the, the Ghost Tracker, one, one of them has an armor that's different to the others and that is a, an item that is it's not a visible item um, but it's an item that adjusts the functionality of the the armor behavior and that's something we want to do for all ships in the future um, and it can do anything from what armor does best in reducing damage uh, we can change that by damage type so you could choose to have an armor that is better against energy weapons at the expense of something else or you can have one that is better at uh, absorbing signals from yourself so you're harder to spot which is what the tracker or hornet nice. ghost does um, what's stopping us from really pushing ahead on that is we want to then have a visual change because having stuff that just changes some numbers behind the scenes isn't that exciting um, whereas if you put the, the item on and your ship visibly changes uh, that's much nicer um, but the art guys are really really hesitant to <laughs> take their lovely ships yeah. and just cover them with armor plates as a, a visual styling so it's sort of doing rounds of look dev uh, every now and then to go how can we convey this thing without it making making it look like a abrams with yeah. uh, ceramic armor all over it you started talking about that my mind instantly went to a demolition derby style terrapin <laughs> basically stripping the sensor back and stripping and just Applying armor onto it, you know, like junk plates, <laughs> and make, making a demolition derby racer version of the terrapin. Just like you know, you can be in your 350R, and you can be in your M50, and take the turns. I'm just going to go right through you, you know, to those rings. But I don't we know. had a, a playtest in systems design 
pubs last week, uh, this week, uh, where it was eight of us on Old Vanderbilt in all in Terrapins. Yeah. Racing, and that was at Demolition Derby. The, the first <laughs> ring <laughs> was unpleasant to get through. Yeah, well, you, 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 I don't think you've lived until you've tried to, 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 to race Old Vanderbilt in nothing but Heralds. That was a unmitigated disaster in yeah. 2016 when we tried that. It was uh, so, so, sometimes bad ideas are just bad ideas. All right, let's see. Um, if every ship can scan, then what are the ships dedicated to scanners for, like the Terrapin? Uh, they are better at it. They can see much, much further doing it. Um, so. These are not the exact numbers, but they're numbers for the sake of giving numbers. Uh, if normal ships can only scan 15 kilometers, the Terrapin and other scanning ships are going to be 30, 40, 50. So they are going to be able to detect things much further away. Their sensitivity is much better. So not only can they uh, see things further away, they can see things closer that other ships can't see. Uh, so those stealth ships, which do have the lower emissions, they they stand a better chance of being able to detect them and uh, detect them and scan them. Um, so, first thing to do to scan something is you've got to detect it. So, uh, stealth ships might be able to be targeted by regular ships uh, at certain ranges, but it's just going to be a blob. You, you're not going to know what it is. It's just, there's this dot that's moving across my screen that my ship cannot scan it because it hasn't got enough of a signature to, to tell me, oh, it's a an eclipse, whereas something like a terrapin is going to go, blimp, gotcha. there's a ship here, it's an eclipse, it's piloted by this person, and it's got this health. This is a good chance to remind folks that just last week we did an entire RTB dedicated to scanning uh, with Kirk Tomei and Mark Avent. So if you do have more questions about scanning, uh, how it's going to work in 3.2, and what our intentions for the entire system are beyond that, I highly recommend you check out last week's RTB. Uh, the bot is available on YouTube. So, uh, Did you put them on really small chairs for that RTB as well? Because they were like... The, okay, okay. No, no. We were all in the exact same chairs. It was three of the exact same chairs. It's just uh, uh, I tend to, to sit up and like this. And uh, you might not know this about video game developers, but you, you'll often find video game developers <laughs> in the dark doing this. So uh, when, they, they, when, they come to, when they come to the desk, and I'm like, sit up, sit up. They sit up, and we adjust the cameras, and then the interview starts, and they go. They just start moving back to their natural, natural habitat. Natural spine position. Yeah, natural spine position. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, it's, we, we, are, we are actively investigating a, an alternative uh, chair solution. All right. Uh, <laughs> we'll... <laughs> This is perfect. Next question. Uh, which Avenger will survive the Infinity War? None of them. Tyler, was that from you or from the chat? He's blaming that on you, chat. I think it's from Tyler, though. All right. Uh, with the blade going into 3-2 with the new Vandal aesthetic, uh, can we expect to see updates to the glaive and uh, scythe visually? Uh Visually, uh, not in 3.2. Um, it's something we're, we've talked about. Um, it's just something we haven't put on a schedule yet. Um, obviously, the, the Scythe and Glaive are from a, a time where the, the Vandal visual aesthetic was quite different, uh, and everything since then is uh, a, a lot more different. Um, it's something we want to do, but uh, there's been no sort of commitment to any dates for doing it. Yeah, it's also something that, uh, that, that, that that's still needs to be investigated a bit. If you watch the, the ship shape on the Vandal blade, uh, one of the things we talked about is how the Vandal as a species uh, takes their technology from, from, from other places. So a Vandal aesthetic can be quite all over the place. So the, you know, the, the, it, it, it's, 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 it's well within the lore for, okay, when we build scythes and glaives, you know, we take from the, we, we've learned over the years to take from these sources. And when we build blades, you know, we've we learned to take from these sources. So they can be quite visually different if the decision is made not to, you know, carry yeah, over. Like, like I say, you could put the, the Vandal family next to each other. The, the scythe and glaive look different, but they don't look like they've come from a, a different alien race. So Yeah, nobody's going to mistake it for the Banu. No. 
All right, what else do we got? Um, uh, what is the ships list? Oh, uh, welcome to the, welcome to join the show. The ships that are coming out with Alpha 3.2, and of course you can track this on the roadmap on robertspaceindustries.com/roadmap. Uh, we've got the Avenger variants, which is the Titan, the Stalker, the uh, um, uh, what's well, the Warlock, and the, the the Titan Renegade, right? Yep. Yep, and the Titan Renegade. Right? So so all, 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 all four, four Titan, all four all four Titans, all four, all Avengers. four Avengers. The 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 uh, the six hundred I uh, exploration. Uh, uh, variant, the uh, Aegis, uh, Ecl uh, Aegis Eclipse, the Anvil Hurricane, and the Vandal Blade. Did I forget any? Nope. That's all. Thank you, Tyler. We don't know. We just have Tyler. Tyler's actually sitting here. He's, do he's doing. He's doing. His, usually, he's doing his job in, in Austin. But he's doing his job like right over there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Uh, will Carrick owners receive a 600i as a loaner for release? Uh, I actually don't know the answer to that. Uh, I'm wrenching it right now because uh, I'm, I'm going to find out the answer and uh, see if uh, see if Tyler can't find out the answer and before the end of the show, see if he can uh, drop it in my chat. We'll see what that is. I'm not involved in that process anymore, so I don't know the answer. Um, let's see. We've heard in the past that the Prospector laser can do damage. Uh, does it do damage? And if so, does it do damage to other ships? Can it do, does it do damage to players? Uh, it's, it's a good question. Uh, trying to think what the current state of it. It was doing damage earlier in the mm -hmm. week to everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were there was a debate going on whether we should, for the initial release, just leave it uh, damaging mineable um, entities or not. Uh, from my side, it should damage anything. Um, that's what I'm pushing for. Uh, <laughs> so you'll be able to use it as a, a weapon, ideally. Uh, it's not going to be the most effective weapon. Yeah. Um, you're not going to be able to go up to uh, a reclaimer and go go start mining the outside of it, but it will it will sort of annoy it. Yeah. Now it's a it's I absolutely if if it hasn't if it hasn't happened on PTU already already I'd be surprised, but uh, I I. I I expect one of the very first things to do is for somebody to, to land, fire up the prospector laser, get out, and then try to walk into it and see what happens. At least that's what I would do. That's the first thing. Um, hey, I'm getting a phone. I'm getting a Skype call. <clears throat> I'm in the middle of the show. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. What else do we got? Uh, will the stalkers' holding cells be functional in any way for Alpha 3.2? Uh, they are usable you can get in and out of them but there's there's no mechanic at the moment to sort of lock people in there uh, which i guess is what that question is trying to say they want to lock people in the back of it yeah. uh, we thought that until we had the proper bounty hunting mechanics locked in place it was a bit open to abuse to remove the option to yeah. get out of the thing yeah. from the inside because we know what will happen is um one person's going to open it uh, and go inside it, and the door's going to close, and then they'll be stuck there forever uh, inside their own ship. Yeah, some, some some people might be into that. Yeah. It's... All right, John, that's it. You made it. You did it. Cool. Congratulations. Uh, thank you uh, for taking the time. I, I I know this was a uh, this was this was a, a midweek audible, so I I do appreciate you uh, making the extra effort to be here this week. That's fine. All right, guys, we are going to take a short break, and when we come when we come back, one time, one time only, a special uh, roadmap update here on RTV. So stay tuned. We'll see you in a minute. Well, that about does it for this week's show. A special thanks to John Crew for staying late on the Friday evening to be here with the show on the show with us this week. Uh, some final housekeeping before we let you go. Now, we're going to try something new with this week's RTV. It's one time only. Uh, if you follow closely, if you follow the project closely, you probably already know that our RSI public roadmap is updated every Friday on the robertspaceindustries.com website. The roadmap is just one of many ways we here at CIG work to share information on the continuing development of Star Citizen 
each and every week. Now, since its inception last year, and of course the, uh, the revamp that occurred back in January of this year, the various producers and directors here have put wonderful effort into keeping star citizens everywhere abreast of all the current trends in our development. With the roadmap, you can see not only a variety of features intended for each content patch throughout the next year, but you can follow the timeline of these features in much the same way that our producers and directors do. Uh, for instance, when awesome new features like uh, service beacons, which were originally thought to be implemented in Alpha 3.2, remember? When they get moved up to 3.1, that's something that we'd like to discuss with the community when it happens. Inversely, when something like the Mustang rework defers out of 3.2 and into 3.3, that's something we think is worth discussing as well. Now, this kind of discussion has been a hallmark of Star Citizen's development since work on the original hangar module began, and it's continued through broadcasts like Around the Verse and Calling All Devs, posts like our monthly studio report or letters from the chairman. And, uh, see, my thing just broke, see? <laughs> that's why we got the thing. So we got the thing. Where was I? I had a prepared statement here. And even events like our upcoming CitizenCon, uh, which tickets of which are going to go back on sale uh, later this year. That's a, shame, that's a shameless plug. Now, ATV is where you'd normally find the project updates every single week. But unfortunately, we missed the cutoff for a couple updates this week. So since we have this platform here on Friday, we figured we'd take the time to update you on a couple changes that you can see on the roadmap that are coming when it updates you know, later this year. Sorry, later this year. Later, later today. That's what happens when the thing disappears. So, for our first and only RTV roadmap update, I'm going to be joined by lead community manager Tyler Wicken, since he's actually here in my studio today to discuss some of the changes that you're going to see on the roadmap later today when it goes live. Tyler, how you doing, man? Hi, good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm so doing, happy. I know. I'm I'm doing so it live, happy. too. I'm so happy you're going to be here. Yes, it's a wonderful time for the, for the neat teleprompter thing to break, isn't it? Oh, yeah, All absolutely. Right. Now, well, first we thing... Make it, we can make it work. Yeah, sorry. You know, it's funny, actually. They started saying this was pre-recorded, and now they know it's not. And then they know it's not, no. <laughs> RTV is never pre-recorded. We have two pre-recorded bits. They're the things you see in the middle. Otherwise, RTV is 100% live. It's just, I, just, I just sound like a robot normally. So, let's see. Uh, first thing out of the gate, let's go ahead and talk about mining. Now, mining is a feature that a lot of Star Citizens have been anxiously awaiting since we first put it on the roadmap, you know, back in January. Right? Now, I know that my, in my intro is, is a little long and we were sidetracked, but Tyler, mining's not disappearing out of 3.2, is it? No, 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 no. First off, right off the bat, uh, mining is absolutely still in 3.2. Don't panic. All right, so mining is still, point three, mining is still in 3.2. Now, this is going to be the initial tier zero implementation, which means that it's going to be the various, very earliest steps of its development. Now, in a tier zero implementation, not all of the features will be available. Uh, we want to tell you that for the tier zero implementation, I've been saying tier zero quite a lot, that's coming in alpha 3.2, uh, it's going to, mining is going to be limited exclusively to the MISC prospector and down on the surface of Crusader's moons. Now, for some, that's going to seem, you know, kind of obvious. It is the only mining ship that's available in the game right now. Uh, but for others, it might be a little, a little disappointing because, you know, we just showed these asteroids that you could target and mine in ATV. Uh, we want to tell you that we're still, we still intend to have asteroid mining. It's not going anywhere. It's just uh, given the time that we have to implement it and where the system is right now, it's not going to make the cutoff for Alpha 3.2. So again, for Alpha 3.2, with the first iteration, the tier zero of mining, it'll be with a mist prospector only and restricted to down on the surface of Crusader's moons. But the, fe the feature teams will continue to work on this after 3.2 publishes, and of course we anticipate adding additional functionalities like asteroid targeting and the ability to use other ships besides the prospector in subsequent releases. I am gonna say that we're very excited to bring the very first iteration of this industrial gameplay to Star Citizen with Alpha 3.2, and you can bet that we're gonna be out there in the persistent universe scouring Crusader's moons for minerals right alongside many of you. Yes, now let's talk about FPS Combat AI. Give it to us straight. Uh, FPS Combat AI. Well, for those of you who may not know what FPS Combat AI is, in its simplest form, it's the ability to have antagonistic AI encounters on space stations, outposts, derelict spacecraft, or even down on the surface of Crusader's moons. Now, I can tell you, I've been looking forward to this moment uh, when, we can, when we're going to be able to salvage a derelict spacecraft and some AI dude pops out of a cupboard and starts you know, trying to fill me with lead. 
Yeah, and this was even a feature we pulled after the publish of Alpha 3.1, and it was super obvious to us that we weren't the only ones anx anxious for this exciting feature. Yeah, that poll was great. Now, that said, while we've made some very exciting progress in this feature over the development of Alpha 3.2, it's not quite where we want it to be for a proper Tier 0 implementation. Now, we've been testing it internally for some time, you know, as we do with all of our game systems as they're being developed, and as we approach the cutoff of this new feature for this quarter's patch, the combat just didn't feel as engaging, balanced, or polished as we'd like it to be for a good, solid introductory experience. And considering where we are in our second quarter release timetable, we just didn't feel there'd be enough time to continue tweaking it during the bug fixing phase and that will also be necessary to make the end of June cutoff. So this is really a, it's really a prime example of the kind of decisions that have to be made to adhere to a timely quarterly release schedule. So, for that reason, FPS Combat AI will defer to Alpha 3.3 on the roadmap later today. But the result should be a far more engaging experience. You know, the kind that you'd expect from the universe of Star Citizen. Yeah, no, that's right. And these choices obviously aren't the easiest to make, um, but it's important that we deliver compelling gameplay experiences with each new feature, even just the early Tier 0 releases. So, that's, I mean, that's what they deserve. Absolutely. Now, the last major change that we'll be seeing in this week's roadmap update is for the often discussed bind calling. Yeah, and in, in case someone doesn't know, why don't you tell us about what bind calling is? Well, I had the description on the teleprompter, and it's <laughs> how much time you got? Uh, I mean, it's your show. All right. Um, well, we, it's okay. Right, let's just say that it's really important to the continuing optimization <laughs> of Star Citizen, and invite our viewers to check out the entire ATV uh, and yeah. RTV we dedicated to the subject uh, later the, earlier this year. Yes, and somebody in chat can surely find the link and put it there. We allow links, yes, right? Yes, please help. So, what's going on with buying culling? Well, we've got an amazing networking team headed by Clive Johnson in the UK that has had this feature as its primary focus for most of 2018. Now, of course, even with something as your primary focus, delays can occur. Uh, you might remember in the days and weeks after Alpha 3.1 pushed live, we made a series of uh, quality of life patches bringing us to the current live release of Alpha 3.1.4. Now, Clive's team was one of the many that worked throughout April to bring all those performance improvements to the 314 branch. But unfortunately, those efforts caused delay in their work on bind culling as an overall feature. Yeah, if only we had the time and the resources to do absolutely everything at once. Uh, I'd probably build you that backyard skate park you wanted. You know what? I know you would. Uh, but how are we doing right now? Um, well, right now, uh, there were a lot of things that we've accomplished to get here. Uh, good things I want to tell you about. They've added another layer of entity tracking ownership, which includes your ship, your items, and your cargo. Now, this is different from the persistence tracking that you're already familiar with, as this layer is designed to help spawning mechanics uh, they, they, that track the proper order of events. Like, uh, for instance, you need your ship to spawn before you spawn inside of it. Always important, but less funny. Yeah, a bit less funny. Now, the gameplay programmers have made some amazing strides. They've completed their move of all the network serialization over to the often mentioned serialized variables. So what that means is that we're no longer reliant on those old systems. That means we've completely abolished the last of the legacy network code that meant every single client has had to know about every single entity in the verse. Party in the streets of Arcorp. Party in the streets of Arcorp. That is that, a big one. <laughs> that's a huge one. That The old legacy code is gone. Now, the team also solved an early issue with buying culling that missed uh, related items when culling a ship NPC or weapon. Uh, like, for instance, you haven't lived until Tyler has flown away from you so far away that the game calls your own head out of existence. Well, how else would I get ahead? Okay, I'm sorry. Not the right time. I'm sorry. Um, they've also made an entire host of improvements with how the server detects which entities are in range of which clients. They've re-optimized how the process is done and improved the network bind and unbind API so that our team members can more effectively control which entities are bound to which clients. Okay, so that sounds like it's almost done. So where are we at now? Uh, it's almost. Now, in a vacuum and on its own, it's pretty much there. The work that still needs to be done now is that most famous of development stages, the one, the one that our own Mark Abent lives in, integration. Now this, this is where you take the game system that works on its own and merge it with all the other game systems that make Star Citizen everything it is. Integration, the bug maker. <laughs> exactly. 
Now, the, the, what the team needs now to, is time to track down and identify all the bugs that will be created by integrating buying calling into Star Citizen's ecosystem. Now, a feature like this, designed to effectively juggle tens of thousands of entities in the game today, taking things into and plugging them, or taking things out of and plugging things into people's clients at will, we want a little time to bang on the pipes as much as we can before opening it up to the biggest test bed, the Star Citizen community. Now, in talking with Clyde quite a bit over the last few months, uh, he and his team have made some fantastic progress with a feature that killed the legacy code that will affect so many different aspects of Star Citizen's continuing development and performance. So I think we can all agree that this is a feature, you know, worth taking their time on. I, I think all features are worth taking their time on. <laughs> Maybe not the carrot. Uh, send your letters to Jared Huckabee, Cloud Imperium Games, Los Angeles. You're basically asking for it at this point. <laughs> well, I can't actually read, so it's my, it's my secret shame. Anyway, thank you so much, Tyler, for being here on the show this week. No thanks at all to the teleprompter that just went <laughs> and, and And thank you for watching our first, last, and only RTV roadmap update. Uh, this was uh, when the opportunity presented itself. When you were here in the studio, I had to take it. We don't get a lot of time to share the stage together, so thank you for letting me pull you in here. I'll be there for you. Come on. When the rain starts to pour. I'll be, be there, there for you. Uh, nope. Uh, for Reverse the Verse Live, I'm content manager for global video production, Jared Huckabee. Uh, and I'm lead community manager, Tyler Whitkin. Uh, at least one of us will see you next week, everybody. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.